Why do narcissists often go after empaths? Or why do narcissists actually think that they even make up good supply or they're able to get things from those people better than other people? If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. And we do it on all the different platforms out there. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, while on the podcast side with Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and also Spotify, all under Raw Motivation. So if you haven't had a chance to be able to follow on some of those platforms, give us a follow. Sometimes you just seeing a video or hearing a podcast and sharing it with a friend of yours that might be in an abusive situation can be life or death, can be freedom for that person getting away from an abuser, getting away from someone who is taking away a lot of their freedoms by narcissistic abuse. Oftentimes we hear and we talk about narcissists and how they go after certain types of people. Sometimes it's people that look a certain way or act a certain way or have different finances or different education or different things. And sometimes there's different variations about that depending on the narcissist and depending on different people that they're around of what they actually go after. When we're talking about the idea of empaths or someone who is identified as an empath, we need to first understand what does that even look like? What does that even mean? You see, typically when we're talking about empaths, we're talking about someone who has a high level of empathy, you know, a high level of sensitivity to different things that are going on. Oftentimes they can read a room or they can understand someone's feelings. They can put themselves in that other person's shoes and feel or experience the things that that person is going through. Typically, they'll have high levels of intuition, of being able to have instinctual ideas of like, wait a second, something doesn't seem right. Something might be off. Often you'll see aspects of them being very caring, warm, loving, like all these different things that actually come into the relationship of saying like, hey, like I care and I love about you like even more so, not even just relationships, but everybody in their life. Typically there's an aspects of being highly sensitive, okay, and having a level of sensitivity that is more of an awareness of what's actually going around them. Maybe it's different energies, maybe it's different people's moods, different aspects like that. Now you look online and there's a lot of different questions to be able to ask of like, how do you know if you're an empath? How do you know all these different things? You know, different aspects of like, are your feelings easily hurt? Do you feel emotionally drained when you're around other people, groups of people or crowds? Do you find yourself taking on other people's stress? Have you been accused at times of maybe being too sensitive? Do you feel overwhelmed in crowded spaces or around a lot of people? Would others describe you as empathetic? If a friend is distraught or going through a tough time, do you feel it? Is it something that you exemplify with? And there's loads of other questions, but the idea is if you answer yes to some of those, then it might be something you want to look into. You never know. You see, narcissists as a whole oftentimes are looking to for other people to be able to feed off of. Now, when I'm talking about feed off of, I'm talking about the idea of ego of entitlement, of manipulation, of all these different things of like, I want to be able to feel a certain way. This is why narcissists go after people that oftentimes will have very high levels of admiration because they want to be adored. They want to be respected. They want to have people that seek after them so they feel better about themselves. Being with a narcissist, you're normally going to notice that that person wants to have that type of validation towards them a lot. Sometimes it varies depending on the type or the person, but a lot of that needs to happen in order for you to be on good terms with that other person. When I've been with other people, some of the aspect of that validation piece or of that admiration is always thinking, hey, it needs to always be about me. And you going off and doing something else with another friend or someone else, like that affects that. And I'm going to get upset at that because it's not all about me in that moment. You're probably going off and doing something else. Now you're cheating on me. You know, all these other things like keep popping up because it's like, hey, I'm not able to feed off of you, feed off of your energy, off of the stuff that's happening in those moments because you're not near me. You're not with me. You're not doing the stuff that I want you to do in that moment. So why a lot of times do narcissists think empaths specifically are good supply? 
Well, when we're talking about empaths or going into it, one aspect is it's easy to overwhelm oftentimes someone who's empathetic because it's easy to overwhelm their nervous system. It's easy to overwhelm who they are as a person. And it's easy to manipulate that overwhelming feeling to be able to get your own way. So like as a narcissist, like going into a conversation, going into an argument, having that ramp up, up, up in more and more, I wouldn't get necessarily like frazzled in the argument. I just keep throwing stuff at the other person. Then eventually they get to the place where they're like, oh, okay, like fine, I just give in. And that's the goal is be able to manipulate someone to be able to be compliant to what they want. So like I would manipulate until that person just finally gave in or got overwhelmed of like, fine, it's whatever, like I'll just do it. I'll do whatever you want or I'll do this, whatever it might be. Oftentimes, the hard part for someone who identifies as an empath is it's hard because their intuition says one thing, but then the narcissist says the exact opposite. So like the intuition says, hey, something is wrong. This person is not treating me right. This person is not caring for me or loving for me or, or how they said that like came across weird because there's actually undertones underneath that's trying to beat me down. Like they have that intuition that pops up, but then the narcissist says something else and they're like, oh, well, maybe my intuition is, is wrong. And you see gaslighting, you see cognitive dissonance, all these different types of things. In my relationship with my wife, there came a time when she had moments when she was around different people, when she was in different scenarios, that she had a gut instinct. Something is off. Like, Ben is cheating. Ben is with that person. There is something going on there. She had that intuition. Oftentimes, and that would come to the surface, she'd accuse me of it. She'd say stuff about it. I make sure I'd lie, you know, manipulate, gaslight to be like, no, like this doesn't exist. But she would have that. That intuition would be there. But then the narcissist, myself, would be like, no, that doesn't exist. Okay. Oftentimes, the narcissist will use that to be able to confuse the other person. The narcissist oftentimes uses your care. So a person who identifies being empathetic, that cares a lot for other people, a narcissist will use that a lot of times to weaponize it for themselves. You care so much for so many people. You know what? I'm actually broken. You need to come fix me. And then you spend all your time giving all your time and energy to that person to fix them or to help them or to make them better. And as a result, they've actually gained an advantage because they now control your actions by appearing a certain way. Sometimes that's, you know, weak or, you know, un unsure, or insecure or different things like that. But in, in turn controls the other person to make them respond whenever they want that person to respond. Same thing with like overwhelming. It's like an aspect of not being able to like recharge, you know, an empath not being able to recharge by getting away from people, you know, to get to, get to a less stressed state. Narcissism is always putting stuff on you like more and more and more. Like the argument doesn't stop. It just keeps ramping up. A lot of times when people talk about themselves being an empath, one aspect is they want to avoid conflict. Like conflict, a lot of times for those types of personalities is very uh, hard to deal with, is very frustrating, and is very hard to be able to like, Ugh, like, I don't know if I can actually deal with this right now. So a lot of times they try to avoid conflict. And that's one thing that the narcissist loves is if you avoid the conflict, that means I can get my way. I can overwhelm you. I can make you act, become a certain way so that I can get what I want. So when people run away from conflict, the narcissist is like, sweet. You're perfect because I can manipulate you. You won't actually argue. You won't actually buck up against me. You'll do what I want. You'll go do whatever. And then I can have my cake and eat it too. I can do whatever I want. Oftentimes in this way, the narcissist will end up getting into their lives and isolating them. You know, they want to recharge. They want to work on themselves, stuff like that. Okay, do that, but don't do this with other people. Like it has to be with me or not at all. Like there's a huge aspect of trying to keep that isolation so that the narcissist keeps that supply. The other aspect that typically happens when we're talking about empaths is they're bad at boundaries. Sometimes this might be because of childhood and they grew up with parents that didn't have boundaries or were bad at boundaries themselves. And it's something that they've just inherently learned or it's something that's been a habit based on previous relationships or based on how much they care about another person that they give so much care to another person, they forget that some of that needs to go back to themselves and that they need to work on themselves and establish healthy boundaries so they don't give everything to another person and don't have anything left to grow themselves or to help themselves. 
Oftentimes I'll use like the illustration of you're flying and whenever they talk about, uh, whenever you're sitting there and they talk about buckling up, the escape exits, everything, they also talk about like the masks that come down, the oxygen masks to be able to help you in case the cabin loses pressure. Well, they always tell you secure yours first and then take care of someone else's. And oftentimes you have empaths that are going around and they're giving their oxygen mask to everybody else. Be like, you need oxygen, you need oxygen, you need oxygen. Oh yeah, by the way, I don't have any. Oh crap, I forgot. Yeah. Because a lot of times the focus is so much on helping other people versus it is having good, healthy boundaries and growing and working on themselves. And you probably notice like even in talking through this, because I've noticed as I've been talking, even through talking through this, you notice like my wording like changes. So be like, I did this and then they, narcissists, do this. And oftentimes it's still me like reconciling in my head why I'm giving an, a specific illustration towards me and then other illustrations towards other people. So I'm sorry if that sounds confusing. The thing I want you to understand is a lot of times narcissists will go after anyone, okay? A lot of times we'll see them go after in a cheating aspect, they'll go after someone younger because that person is viewed as like fresh meat, okay? It's viewed as, hey, this person is young, they're easily moldable, they haven't had a lot of life experiences, so whatever I tell them, whatever I expose them to, that's all they will know. So a lot of narcissists will go towards younger people, not always, okay? The two things that I think narcissists always go after is people that don't have a sense of self and don't have boundaries. If you have someone who has no sense of self and no direction of where they're going, they in turn won't have any good healthy boundaries and as a result, the narcissist is able to come into their life, use and abuse and manipulate and tell them, no, you're supposed to be following me. You're supposed to be going this direction and control the way that that person goes. So oftentimes when you're thinking through, hey, am I an empath? Am I not? Like, is this stuff that I identify with? I want to ask you the question, do you know who you are? And do you have boundaries in your life that you can actually have in your life that are goals for you, that are things that are helping you move forward in a positive way? If you don't, then I want you to check out claritychallenge.net. It's a new challenge that we've come out with to help people gain clarity after being with a toxic person.